Hey everybody, welcome back to Sport Bike Menace, the channel. Now today we're going to have the topic of the update of the Rule Rock 3.0. Um, everybody's giving me a lot of hate on the review because I based it off of the product release of the videos that they, uh, they produced. And it was a teaser. Yes, I get it. You know, get over it. Anyway, so this is an update because they updated their video, so now there's more information and um, they put wording to everything that got changed. So we're gonna watch the video together just in case those that didn't get to watch Rural Rock's videos, um, that they, maybe they don't know that Rural Rock has a YouTube channel or Facebook. Uh, maybe just a friend told them, hey, about Rural Rock. Now we're gonna do um, a review and comparing it to the 2.0. A lot of views don't like that, but in reality, that's the best way to do this, right? Because it's an updated from the 2.0. If it's if it's not um, any better than the 2.0, why do you want to spend the money? Like, think about it. You guys keep talking about, oh, you can't review something that you don't have in hand. It doesn't matter if I'm trying to help you save money. And, and to think about the, the promise we had on the 2.0, if the 3.0 has it, it's not worth your money. You know, let somebody else buy it. Let somebody else do the review. Let a YouTuber do the review and hopefully they don't lie because that's what they did on the 2.0. They lied on the 2.0 and didn't tell the people the real problems that the 2.0 have. And we're going to discuss it and compare what they fixed and what they, what they might have not fixed. Because so far it looks like they fixed it all. But there's one that I believe they didn't fix. So I hope you guys stay tuned and uh, we're going to go through that right now. But we're going to watch the video. Uh, what they they uh, updated in the the features. Ah, uh, let me turn off this. I keep forgetting to turn this off. So they updated the inliner and the uh, positioning for the visor, because the visor. And I'll explain everything in a bit. They also changed the um, interior of the cheek pads, and again, I'll explain that. Um, they changed the, the the way they seals around the visor, and they also changed the vent, and I'll explain that anyways. They also changed the shockwave. This part, I don't get it because the, it's still the same helmet as the 2.0, so that, I never understood what they're trying to say about that. Because it's still the same helmet. Okay, so let's talk about what got approved or, or fixed, improved. Um, and what might have not get fixed. Now, to compare again from the 2.0 to the 3.0. What they did fix, because we all had the problem with this one, right? So it did not stay half open, like about right there, right? A lot of helmets, they will stay open right there. This doesn't, it just closed completely, right? Where, where it opens up is right there. And a lot of times when we're sitting at a stop sign or we're sitting at a red light, we don't want to lift it all the way up there. You know, we just want to be a little lazy. Just, you know, that's the reality. We just want to crack it open right there. Just to leave enough. And then and if you if you don't get enough time to close it, it's not a big deal. Because you don't got all this gust of wind drying your eyes. Or you get bugs or rocks hitting your eye. Because, you know, it's all the way open like that. So they fixed the positioning of where you can leave it half cracked open right there. So that's one of the things they fixed. Now, I never had a problem with the, the way it seals. Like, there's, a, I guess, a rubber. We'll lift this up. So, there's a rubber piece right here. I never had problems with it. it there is, a, a, you know, some wind noise, but it's not a big deal to the point where I'm, like, really upset about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's not much of a whistle. Now, I heard about on the uh, 1.0, it was terrible. It was a lot of wind noise. It was very... Uh, uh, it, like it's a whistle going through there and it was very annoying. So on this one, I, I really believe they really improved it. I wouldn't really complain too much about the wind noise or the road noise. Ro road, road noise. Now, for being a $500 helmet, yes, I would say it could have been approved. So I'm glad that they are approving that. Um, they're also improved the cheek pads in here. 
I really don't want to take this apart. Okay, so to, to make the, they, they improve two parts of the inside. So this is the old fabric that they used. And I'm gonna explain what's really bad about it, right? So when you pull on this or, or you push, I'm just gonna push on it. Look, it's already coming out, right? Look, now it's out, right? Then you gotta keep pushing that back in. And then, you know, it's supposed to be for your emergency, you know, to, to pull out, whatever. So supposedly now they fix that. Now they don't have to tuck it in anymore. It's flush, like it's flush to this. Um, there's no more tucking in. Um, what's holding it in place are the clips. Um, so I'm glad they did took that because that was that was that was getting me frustrated that that coming out. Um, and I'm again, there's gonna be more there's gonna be more negative about the insides than about the helmet itself. Um, the fabric it's it's too squishy. Um, it should have been like a medium, um, you know, not too soft, not too hard. Uh, I believe this is too soft. Um, I mean, it is comfortable to put on, but at the end of the day, I think if you crash, um, there's not much, you know, stopping your head from hitting the actual helmet itself. So I don't really think that's safe. Um, but that's, everybody has their own preference. Now me, I bought a helmet uh, to protect my head when I, when I want to, because not every time I wear a helmet, but um, it's a personal choice. So the, they did approve and then supposedly is a better quality of the inliner. Um, so there's uh, they changed the plastics in the insides where the this the um, the inliner clips into. So when you check out their video and you get to put pause, they put more different plastic inside. Now the way it looks like the clips got changed. Now. I'm hoping they did because if the clips did not get changed, we're gonna talk about the biggest problem with this helmet. It's the clips that hold the inliner in place and it holds the cheek pads in place. The clips are completely useless. And I'm gonna exp I'm gonna show right now. As soon as you put the helmet on, the clips pop out. So now you have to retake off your helmet to push the clips back in. And when you do get to put it on and the clips do stay, when you go to take your helmet off, the clips pop out again. Then you gotta reinsert your, in, you know, your your uh, inliner, and then reclip it all together. So the clips were uh, uh, very disappointing because they weren't they weren't really user friendly um, with the clips. Now and again, I'm gonna show you guys right here. Okay, what's the biggest problem with this? Is these clips right here? See, already just popped out. I don't gotta put that much force into it, and. It's one clip holding two inliners. So see this one right here, and then the, there's a back piece to it too. So it's one clip holding two inliners. And see if I can get it in frame on how the clip looks like. So it's just a big circle clip, just a big circle. And then inside the helmet, they drilled out a big circle. And then you push one circle into another circle. But there's really nothing, like there's no lip on this circle. There's no lip to it. The same thing with inside there, there's nothing really to grab it, you know? So it, it, you push it in. You can hear like, it, you can hear a noise like it clipped and then it just comes right out. It's just too easy to come out. So everything comes out too easily. Like it's too, it's too fragile. Like just, I don't know if you can see, too fragile. I don't even gotta push that much force into it. I'm just shaking it side to side and it's already coming out. And the same thing with here, right? When you're putting on your helmet, it, it drags down. Look, it already came out. I barely put any force to it and it comes out. And then you gotta retuck it into your helmet and re-put the clip in. Um, on top of that, when you're holding your helmet and you want to go to the, the, the store or you got to walk around or whatever the case may be, when you take off your helmet, this is what you got to do. Now you're stuck fighting with your helmet because everything came apart. And you know how you spent $500 and you're stuck messing around with your helmet while your friends don't got to do that. They don't got to worry about it. They got cheaper helmets. You're the one that spent $500 on a helmet. 
and you're stuck here fighting with your helmet. Like, how? That's like getting a Ferrari, and the Ferrari breaks down on the middle of the side, I mean, or the side of the road, and I'm driving a Toyota Prius. And my Toyota Prius is working fine, and I spent less money than a Ferrari. Now, who looks more smarter and who looks dumber? So the person that's driving the Ferrari has just got something good looking to look at, but nothing really user, use, usable. Now, the person that's driving a, T a, a Toyota, it's ugly to look at, but it's use, you can use it. So that's how I feel with this helmet. It's beautiful, it's like a Ferrari, but it's not really usable. So supposedly the way it looks like, the clips, the way it looks like, again, until a YouTuber doesn't do a review and tears their stuff apart and show everybody that the clips changed. Um, I don't know, but it looks like it, the clips did change. It looks like the inliner changed. If the clips did not change and they changed the, well, we know they changed the, the quality of the inliner, but if the clips did not change, I'm telling you guys now, it's not worth buying at all because you're going to be fighting with these clips. It's, it's really terrible clips. They're, they're, there's just, it's just a circle going into a circle. There's really not much. You can hear a click and then it, it's not much keeping there. And it just came out now. So, the inliner is the biggest problem for a lot of us because that's the biggest complaint is the inliner. Now, um, so again, they changed the, the quality of this, of the inliner. They changed the quality of the clips, supposedly, but we've got to wait and see. Um, they also changed the shock wave. Now, I don't know if you guys can see, my buttons are very tiny. On the video, these buttons became much bigger and they eliminated... Uh, one of these buttons, uh, I think it's the RST got eliminated, and then they made the power button, the uh, volume, and minus, they made them much bigger. Now, my biggest gripe with the Shockwave. Now, I didn't have a problem with this. This is why I bought the Shockwave, right? Because I have a foam mount on my bike, right? I have it in front of me on the triple tree, and I can hit the volume and all that stuff. So to me, it wasn't a big deal. This is for people who don't have a phone mount and they have a phone in their pocket or they have it in their trunk of the bike, uh, whatever, wherever they have the phone at, but it's not in front of them. Um, it's gonna be impossible to really use this Rule Rock if you don't have a phone mount because you gotta feel where the buttons are at in the back of the helmet. It's really not user friendly. On top of that, you really, in reality, what you want is, um, a Bluetooth communications communication that goes on the side. Uh, with he, with this helmet, I, I I don't know if one would work, but if you did get one, you would want one that goes on the side, right? You really want it on the left side because your right side is your throttle hand, and your left side is more of the hand that's free to relax. So you want to put that on the left side, and it has a dial that you can dial it in, or sometimes they have a button. But I prefer a dial because at least it's more physical. You can feel that it's a dial and you can turn it right or left. Uh, a button, you really don't know which button that might be. And then you got to just try to figure it out. But anyways, um, the Shockwave is not really user friendly if you do not have a phone mount. So I'm hoping with their new helmets after the 3.0, um, they can change the Shockwave and actually make it a one that's side. That's right here on the side. And it would work for them, even if it's, it's if it, even if it's built into the helmet, and then it still has a little knob, you know, it, it's it's gonna work. Uh, they got engineers, they got this. Um, they also changed out so the vents here, right? There's a three stage vent going up and down, so that got changed. This one has a vent; it's just open and closed. They, there's now three stages. I don't know why people need it, but hey, that's what they needed. Um, I think that's it. In reality, I think that was just it. So, oh, and they, they, they changed the, um, the artwork, which is beautiful artwork. They also changed some colors for the visor for the new 3.0. But um, there's no pricing yet of how expensive that's going to be. Now, I that I remember, I think these were $500. Either $500 or $550. It depends on which um, um, design you would pick. But yeah, guys, uh, this is the 2.0, and the review that I'm doing is off of the video that they released, right? I'm updating my video that I released prior to this, where a lot of people got upset, 
put a lot of disrespectful comments. Um, I even had Root Rock reach out to me. And again, I'm making a video to protect everybody from spending money without understanding the issues that is out there, right? These are for new newbie riders who see Root Rock on Facebook and be like, oh man, that helmet is really cool and they come out to buy it. I'm protecting them and their investment, right? This is not a smart investment. You can go for a cheaper helmet and that has better quality than the 2.0. I'm not going to say that the quality of the 3.0 is terrible because I don't know. We're comparing one from the other. So people don't go out buying the 3.0 unless you got money to, to let's say you, you got $20,000 in your bank account and you can do whatever you want with it, right? You got enough money to, it doesn't matter if you waste it, right? You can buy 10 helmets today and it's not, it doesn't matter because you got money. But if you are on a tight, on a tight budget, do not go out and buy the 3.0 or the 2.0 or the 1.0. Buy something that's in your budget because it's gonna have a better quality than this. Yes, it's not gonna look as cool as this or it's not gonna have as the cool factor. Um, but to be honest, I rock this in around the city and no one really gives me compliments about the helmet. No one says, ooh, that's a nice helmet. Ooh, you spent a lot of money. Ooh, that's from Rue Rock. No one really cares. But to be honest, I didn't get it for people. I got it because it matched my bike and I liked it, the design that it was. It wasn't because, oh, it's a name brand. I can care less about the name brand. I care about the design and how the helmet looked like. But now to find out that the quality ain't as, as good as the design and the, you know, the expectation, now I, you know, I'm a little bit upset about it. I'm a little bit of butt hurt because it's expensive. It's not cheap. Um, and to be honest, the, how heavy it is, my bell feels the same weight as this does. So I don't, it's carbon fiber, but it doesn't feel that much lighter. But anyways, guys, if you guys like the review, uh, put a like on it, put a comment, please be respectful. Cause if you don't become respectful, I'm gonna be disrespectful and respect. So you get respect. I'm doing a review off of the review or, or the video that they left behind. It's not clickbait because I don't got to put it on whatever title it is. And I'm going to rant a little bit. No one made a rule on how to do reviews or how to put titles. No one made a rule on how to do YouTube, right? It's a freedom of speech. You're the creator. You're the director. You are your person, right? So this YouTube channel is mine. It's not your YouTube channel. It's my YouTube channel. And how I plan to do reviews is on what how I plan to do reviews, right? What works for me might work might not work for other people right and what works for other people might not work for me right i'm not trying to jump the bandwagon and be like everybody else i'm somebody different right and that's what i'm trying to do i'm trying to take over the the, the youtube industry and make an empire out of this and be somebody different i'm not trying to be like um chase on two wheels uh fort nine uh 650 eve jared camp pc snooge all these big YouTubers, I'm not trying to copy their style. I'm gonna make my own style. So show respect for the style that I'm bringing, right? As simple as that. You don't like the way I do things, put a dislike and just leave it alone. You wanna put a comment saying, hey, it's clickbait. I'm gonna put K and put laughing faces and leave you be. As soon as you become disrespectful, understand that I'm gonna do the same. I even had a guy on, and you can search it up on, um, the Rue Rock 3.0 review, he put the middle finger and said, this, regards, he says, regards to your mother and put the middle finger on an emoji. You gonna bring my mother into this because of a, a YouTube video or because I came at you and made you feel dumb? Show your respect because in reality, a lot of you fools are gangsters on, on the computer, on the keyboard, but when you see each other in person, y'all ain't gonna speak the way y'all speak, right? It's just being real with you. So respect the person who's doing what he's doing because at least I'm doing something with my life. And I hope you guys can to do, you guys get to do something with your life and be happy about what you do. Simple as that. So everybody, I hope you guys put a like, put a comment, um, subscribe to the channel and uh, catch me on the next video. Stay safe, stay warm. See you. Peace out.